I know I kept you all on the edge since we stopped mid this slide, but thank goodness I remembered where we were. All right, we were talking about, oh, hydraulic fracturing, factoring, fracturing, just, I'll just say it differently each time, it doesn't matter. Please go back to the YouTube video, maybe I'll put a little, you know, while you're YouTubing it, I'll put a little thing because everyone should know the fracking song. I'd sing it, but my mother once told me never sing out loud. So I'm guessing that means it's not good. So we talk about how they just shove injected water, salt, oh look, radioactive elements and toxic chemicals found in the deep rock. It happens, okay? They're not shoving radioactive elements, but it can cause minor earthquakes. We've already talked about how Oklahoma, what is it like a 300% increase in, in earthquakes? Yeah, they're not on a fault line or anything. And it just happens to be a big, huge coincidence that it's only happened since fracking's happened in Oklahoma, but you know, those things are not related at all. So, oil sands are the most ecologically damaging due to the vast amount of deforestation, water use, and toxic wastewater release. We saw the picture, just in case you forgot. Just saying. Remember, I pointed out the trucks. Okay, so here's what fuels can leak during transport and storage. This was the big thing with the pipeline, which is why everyone was like, no, no, don't change the route. Number one, let's not transport it all the way from Canada down to freaking Texas, but you know, whatever. So then we did it after everyone was like, no, Obama was like, okay, we're not gonna change the route. We're not gonna put it over the Ogawa water, um, you know, our aquifer, and then we did, and then oopsie, it leaked. I mean, those are some big oopsies. So oil and coal are both transported by rail, which can carry a risk of derailment, I'm guessing. And about 2.7% of natural gas piped to homes and businesses escapes into the air. So now we're putting that gas in the air that we pump for, we drill for, right? Because it comes up with oil, we already talked about that. So methane also escapes into the air during oil drilling, ooh, look, twofer. Okay, because pipelines are often not in place to collect it because they're busy collecting the oil. Because remember, everything is a cost analysis. It may not be, you know, worth the time to collect that gas, even though you can sell it, but it's not worthwhile if you're pumping for oil. Just that stuff, it can float in the air. <laughs> Climate change nonsense. Okay, so here we have 2010 BP Deepwater um, horizon spill, which is still affecting the Gulf of Mexico. They just came out with new studies. I have an article right there, sitting right under my cat's butt that he's sitting on right now that talks about how the waters are still contaminated. You're just gonna have to trust me on the cat butt thing, okay? Oil continued to leak for three months. Three months! And you know what's even worse is that they knew that the fail safe didn't work. But you know, someone had done the math. They probably don't do math like that anymore. They're like, a, Okay, and they figured that, you know, the chance and the probability of it having compared to how much it would cost for us to go down and fix it, you know, let's, let's you know, gamble on five or whatever, or red, I don't know, I don't gamble, because otherwise that analogy would have been way better. Okay, and then we have sad things. Look, I mean, look, even all those Dawn commercials, they're still showing you birds color, coated in oil. Beach cleanup, okay, a wide horizon, a wide amount of impacts happen they're still having now they're finding that mammals are coming up with respiratory ailments from all of those disbursements which may have been worse than the oil spill itself because you know we're not a bunch of thinkers you know we didn't think like oh we better get rid of the oil yeah let's spray more chemicals on it that are coming out in the form of an aerosol that'll be fine i don't know what we we're thinking once again not a lot of thinkers okay if you guys could be thinkers or grow up and elect thinkers I, I don't know, pick one. I, you can be a thinker, elect a thinker. You could double your money and be a thinker and elect a thinker. Just, you know. So, overall pollution from large spills has declined because we came up with some regulations. Because, you know, every time we spill crap or something leaks, we're like, oopsie, let's figure out how not to have that happen again. I know it's already happened, but let's not do it twice. So, the, um, one of the big ones was after the Exxon Valdez sp spill in 89, they made those double hull tankers. So you have an inner lining which holds the oil, and then you have the outer lining which is basically what the ship is floating on. So if one gets pierced, it's still hopefully contained. Today, most oil pollution entering the ocean comes from um, countless non-point source 
okay? So we can't see it because we can't point at it because that's what point source pollution is. Now we have it even with oil. So in other words, uh, you know, you don't even think about it, but asphalt is an oil product. You run tires on it, it heats up, some of it kind of runs off. They have that problem in California all the time when it rains, because it rains every, every, and when it does, it's like everything runs off. And we know when it goes down to a storm drain, it doesn't get treated, where does it go? Directly out into the ocean. So then we have homes, gas station, businesses, and cars that leak oil into the roadways. So when it leaks into the roadways, then we have stuff like, I don't know, rain, okay? And it goes into the storm water, the storm drain, which then does not process it. You can, you can watch it be dumped, okay? You can watch it be dumped in some of the places like in the intercoastal. You can just see the storm water drain dumping right into the intercoastal. So burning fossil fuels alters the carbon cycle, which you know, right, 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 carbon cycle, okay? And long-term reservoirs of carbon are liberated and converted to carbon dioxide. Bad. We want to hold them in the reservoirs. And look at that. Who doesn't like a graph? I know I say it every single lecture, but it's still true. Graphs are great, especially when they're these pretty colors. They won't be this pretty color on the test. But you can read how, look at this, billions of metric tons of carbon per year. Since the 50s, look at that. I know. Solar, I'm just saying. Wind, why not? I mean, you know, sun, earth, it happens all the time. So carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and its emissions recognized as the biggest consequence of fossil fuel use. Fossil fuel emissions can affect human health. So now let's turn it around and make it all about us because then at least we like it, right? Now we're paying attention. Combusting coal emits mercury, which biomagnifies, okay? And then we know as it goes up the food chain, it bioaccumulates, turns you already know, okay? Cancer causing hydrocarbons such as benzene, Toluene are released from burning gasoline. No point, does that sound good? Poisonous hydrogen sulfide evaporates from crude oil and vehicles, power plants release sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, which cause acid precipitation. Acid precipitation, just think, coming down, land not good anywhere it lands. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Okay, so then they say clean coal technology. No! It's not true. I don't care what anyone writes or anyone advertises. Coal is not clean unless you clean it and then you use it, okay? Your kitchen counter can be clean, but first you had to wipe it off and put all that schmutz somewhere, right? You, they, have to, they still have to gather the schmutz and do something with it. So clean coal technologies refers to an array of techniques, equipment, and approaches that aim to remove chemical contaminants during the generation of electricity from coal. The coal itself is not clean. They're doing stuff to make it so when they burn it, it doesn't give off as many things. And what does it involve? Using many minerals that absorb sulfur dioxide or chemical reactions that remove nitrogen oxide. Coal can also be dried or converted to a cleaner synthesis gas called, what scientists so crazy, a synthesis gas called syngas. I know you like it when scientists make up words like that, to make it cleaner burning. But then now to, you notice they're going through chemical processes. Chemical processes require energy. Where are they getting that energy from? You can see how it all ties together, right? If not, I'm pointing it out to you. You can see it all ties together, right? Okay. Or look, pictures for your enjoyment. You can pause. Carbon capture and storage. We saw this on another slide when we, oh, when we were doing air pollution involves capturing carbon dioxide emission, converting gas to a liquid form, and then sequestering or storing it in the ocean or underground in a geologically stable rock formation. I think they thought Oklahoma was geologically stable before they started doing fracking. I could be wrong, you could check it out. You got nothing to do for the next couple of days. You know, go, go Google that. So carbon capture and storage remains too unproven to be, viably, to be a viable strategy. Good news. Why are we storing? What? Why? Why are we storing it? I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, trees do a really good job. Okay, let, let's let's more trees. Let's employ more trees. Okay, look, we've solved problems. Let's go, everyone, go employ a tree. There is no way of knowing if stored carbon will remain underground indefinitely. Of course, it not. We'll, we'll mess it up in a couple of years. We'll figure out some way to get to that and release it and mess it up. 
Injection could contaminate groundwater supplies or trigger earthquakes. Yeah, you think? And the process is very energy intensive and decreases the EROI of coal. And you all remember that acronym? I hope you do because you go back and look at that. Okay? So we all pay external costs. All of us. Okay? The health and environmental impacts of fossil fuels are external costs that we pay for as society. Medical expenses, environmental cleanup, long-term damage from climate change. Long-term damage from climate change. See, this is one of those things where you have to be able to, if you're writing your FRQ, you have to be able to connect the dots for the reader. The emissions of carbon dioxide, okay? Releasing it because of burning fossil fuel, how that contributes to climate change. You just can't say climate change because of carbon dioxide, okay? You can't say climate change because of fossil fuel burning. You have to connect the dots. Please connect the dots. Connect, I'm just saying, connect the dots. So, fossil fuels have been kept artificially inexpensive. I know, why are we subsidizing these things? This pisses me off. Due to government subsidies and tax breaks for extraction companies. Let's, I've said it before, I know, I'm redundant, but that's okay. Let's subsidize broccoli, okay? Let's subsidize broccoli. I don't know, what do I think? Uh, onions, I mean some kale, uh, there was kale on the way out. I mean, is there something new? Quinoa, that's new, right? Let's subsidize that. Why are we freaking subsidizing fossil fuels? They make a gajillion dollars. All right, how much have you looked at how much broccoli is recently? Fossil fuel extraction often leads to a flush of high paying jobs and economic activity that seems to outweigh any potential environmental costs. Over time, these booms go bust, okay? The Keystone Pipeline was estimated to provide thousands of jobs, but many landowners declined their offer to buy their land. No one's gonna ask you if it was who offered. No one, no one, just tell you, no one. This you need to know, eminent domain, uh, just right here. Pause, write it down, okay? Here, car, somewhere, okay? A policy where courts can set aside private property rights has been used in some cases to take the land away. You know, before all this stuff with us being at home happened, you know, our president that we have now is using eminent domain to build the wall. I know, because, you know, I. You look that up if you think I'm making stuff up. You know I never do. When you Google it, I'm always right. So, many nations lack adequate fossil fuel reserves to supply their own energy and need to rely on imports. I got distracted. I was looking at the graph because, you know, graphs. I like graphs. So, this gives stellar nations more control over energy prices, especially as supplies dwindle. Okay, here's how we have OPEC resolved to stop selling oil to the United States, creating an energy crisis. Yeah. That was bad. Go look at, I'm sure there have to be pictures online somewhere of where it was like, you know, you, you could only get gas by your license plate, either by your number or by your letter. And it, you waited in line like six hours. It was like after a hurricane, but for a really long time and across the entire country. So here you go, oil embargo, other things that affected the price of oil. Ooh, pie charts. Who doesn't like those? To reduce the risk, the U.S. has supported oil sands. So I bet we're subsidizing that big, huge black hole in the middle of Alberta, Canada, because, you know, we do stuff like that. We're not doing it. Oh, no, we're getting it from Canada. Okay. And, um, and the construction of their pipelines and diversified its source of imported petroleum. We're diversifying where we get our petroleum. Why don't we just stop that? I mean, you know, to a certain degree, wean ourselves off of it. I'm not saying go cold turkey today. But sometime in the near future, let, let's do something else. This has also led to repeated attempts to open up oil drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Oh wait, our president did open it up. The one we have now, not the one we had when it was, was written, okay? So now he opened it up. Because we know my opinion, which is a fact that he's a schmuck. So, and here are some review questions. You can pause. Oh, bad. Okay, which fossil fuel can escape your What do you think it is? Natural gas. More. So energy efficiency describes the ability to obtain a given amount of output while using less energy input. This results from improved technology, like the fact that you guys probably are now using LED lights in some of your light bulbs. Way more energy efficient. It costs less, you're using less energy, 
and I mean, at PL, they do ga natural gas and solar, but still, you're conserving. Why wouldn't you want to if you pay less? Look, that's a financial thing. It's an environmental thing and a financial thing. Twofer. Energy conservation describes the practice of reducing wasteful or unnecessary energy use. It's a behavioral choice. Make choices. As soon as you have your ability, or you can influence your parents, whatever you think you want to do, make good choices. Make choices that have some scientific facts behind them because the more you know the better your choice can be i mean you can still make stupid decisions but at least have some knowledge and then fess up and say yeah i know i'm sucking it up i was i know i was bad and just move on so americans do far more than anyone else anyway anyway okay this indicates that americans could reduce their energy consumption without significantly impacting their quality of life look at the world Okay, look at us. We're up there. Look, there's a bigger picture. Energy intensity is the energy used per dollar of gross domestic product. You economics people, you like those words. Lower energy efficiency indicates a greater efficiency in electricity use. Graph. Uh-oh, which is the bad house? Okay, cogeneration is a process in which excess heat produced during the generation of electricity is captured and used to heat nearby workplaces, homes, and to produce other kinds of power. If you guys look into Tampa's electric, cogenerates and does stuff with its desalinization plant. We're doing stuff in Florida because we have the capability. We have like sun, ocean, and we're surrounded by a lot of salt water. There are things that we could be doing. Improved design and insulation can also help to reduce heat from loss from buildings. I'm guessing the orange one is losing more heat than the green one. I'm just going to guess. Okay. Recent regulations have restricted how much power devices can use while in standby, sometimes called vampire power loss. You guys know this, even when you turn stuff off, like you turn your TV off, it saves all your cable channel and stuff like that. When the electricity goes off, it takes 20 minutes to reboot. That would be what would happen every time if you actually turned off the electricity to your TV. So, the US EPA's Energy Star program labels refrigerated dishwashers and all that. You can't buy anything that's not Energy Star anymore, okay, unless you're going to the swap shop, and none of you all are. So, otherwise, everything new that you're gonna buy is gonna be Energy Star rated. Go look on the side of your air conditioner, you go dig into that. So, automobiles, car lab. I'll take that once the next semester starts. I'll, I'll send out a, a thingy. Following the OPEC embargo in the 70s, the U.S. increased its corporate average fuel efficiency CAFE standards. Okay? This is overall the miles per gallon that a fleet of cars has to have from a car company. So as fuel prices fell over the next few decades, these standards were not increased further until 2007. And we know our new president knocked them back down because, you know, we need to have more trucks that only get two miles per gallon. It's a good plan. So the rebound effect cuts into efficiency gain. What is the rebound effect? Here it is. Gains in efficiency may be offset if people engage in more energy consuming behavior. So you've got your LED lights, which use less energy, but now you have your cell phone, your computer, and your TV going at the same time. Okay, well, now you've kind of broken even on that savings going on there. So there we go, that's the rebound effect. So a combination of, it's like a blurred in front of me for a second, of energy efficiency and conservation effort is essential to creating a sustainable future. A sustainable future. If you'd like to be around, or if you just invest in investing now in Pembroke Pines as waterfront property, I mean, it just depends on how you're going to be looking at things, okay? Some estimates hold that the U.S. could save 6 million barrels of oil a day, more than could be gained from Canada's oil, sh oil um, sands. Really? Really? We, I, I don't know why these seem like difficult choices. So, here are your questions. You go enjoy. Ta-da! Done with 19.